Welcome into a special edition of Locked on Astros. We sit down with Astros prospect Ethan Pecco on the day that he starts for the Fayetteville Woodpeckers. Yes, that's a Woodpeckers hat that I'm wearing. We're supporting our guys on the farm, and we are trying to see what their goals are and where Ethan sees himself going into the 2024-2025 season. Let's talk about it right now. Jainel Diaz, this is Locked on Astros. Welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on X at Eric Talkstros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Uh, Thank you for making us part of your daily routine, whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us, go and get, give us a big fat thumbs up, go and make us part of your daily routine and uh, listen to us on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts, go and check us out. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account and use the code Locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Brett, when you're not wearing a, uh, a Woodpecker's hat, where can I find you at? Look, they can find me at H. Chenway House on X, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at Stros411 on Facebook and on X. They can also find me on Back to the Bullpen on X and on Instagram. Look, I'm always positive, always Stros, and I'm absolutely excited and stoked that we have Ethan Pecco, uh, Pecco here, um, six-round pick out of Townsend University. Um, I've heard great things about this kid, and Ethan, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. And what a name to be playing for the Woodpeckers. Uh, Pecco, Woodpeckers, uh, that's that's his awesome little name. So uh, you told me before the show that you're actually starting today. So I know that a lot of pitchers have uh, different routines. I know they uh, they throw like bullpens before between um, games and it, everything. But there's certain pitchers out there like Justin Verlander that you don't talk to during a game and stuff like that. But do you have any uh, like pregame rituals uh, that you do before? Before you start, um, nothing crazy. I, I will say I make sure I get a really good breakfast. Usually, it's Cracker Barrel. Um, I've been having Cracker Barrel like every day I've been pitching, and uh, it's been working. Um, other than that, nothing crazy. Uh, just kind of keep my headphones in, stay to myself, and uh, really just get locked in and get ready for the game. You know, it's funny whenever I go to Constellation Field, um, where the uh, you know, S- you know Space Cowboys play. Yeah, so it's AAA program. Um, it's so funny to see the kids because they just think every every ball player is there for them. And um, last time I was there, the reason why I mentioned this is this this one kid was was yelling at Justin Verlander. He was there making his rehab start. He was yelling, he was, "Hey, Verlander!" And one kid looked at him. He goes, "Hey, you're gonna mess him up." He's like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "He's got a routine." You never talk to the starting pitcher like these little eight and nine year olds were like one of them was instructing <laughs> him on the rules of the game. And the other one was just like, I, he was like, but I still want his autograph. He's like, dude, he's not going to sign your baseball. And it was it was this great like conversation I saw. And, and and that's the thing as a as a pitcher, you you get into a routine, you lock in and you're able to do that. Ethan, let's get right into it. Six foot two right handed pitcher out of Townsend. You started at. LaSalle, before we get into your career as a professional pitcher, um, I noticed in high school, you weren't just a baseball player. You were a golfer. Um, was there Were there ever any aspirations to try to go PGA or Corn Ferry and try to make it big? Um, I think the delusional, five, like 5% of me thought, hey, maybe I could do this. But golf is such a game where it's you versus you and uh, repetitions and experience really like reign supreme in that game. And I just, I don't have the years that some of these guys have. So, uh, it's definitely just turned into a great hobby for me. Yeah. I wore my Callaway shirt, uh, just for that comment. Um, so, (laughs) but I think golf is definitely a game that you can get really frustrated with. Baseball is too, but, um, I think that golf is definitely something that, uh, I think you made a good choice and going to uh, pitching and um, uh, with <laughs> on that note, uh, looking at back at when you're drafted, I like to ask um, like, especially people that are recently drafted like yourself uh, to 2023, where were you when you found out that you're drafted by the Houston Astros and who were the first people that you got to tell? 
Uh, so I was at home, um, nothing crazy. It was uh, my parents, my brother, uh, one of my best friends, and then some neighbors were there. Uh, smaller group, but uh, a group that has a lot of love for me and I have a lot of love for them. Um, and then after that, it was just a bunch of phone calls and a bunch of congratulations, you know, the community and, and where I'm from is extremely supportive. And uh, it was just a, a really special moment. I have a follow up to that. Um, Ethan, did you have any idea that the Astros were going to draft you or is it kind of out of the blue? It was kind of out of the blue. I knew there was some interest there. I had heard from them, I want to say in May last year. So almost this time last year after I pitched against William and Mary. And then after that, I didn't hear much. And it was really my uh, my agent who kind of said, hey, the Astros are interested. They might take you here. And then the rest is history. Now, what's it like? You know, this is this is a Houston Astros team that's been on quite a historic run. Of course, you know, this year's been a little bit uncharacteristic of the last seven years. Um, and I still think, and Eric and I still think, and our locked on listeners still believe that that the Astros are going to, you know, you know, water's going to find its level. But what's it like being drafted into an organization that right now is just on one of those runs? Is that is that special to you, or are you just at the point where you're like, you know what, I got drafted, I'm going to focus on just getting to the bigs? What was your feeling when you when you heard the name Houston Astros and you're a part of the organization? I mean, it, it's it's a it's a special accomplish, just accomplishment just because uh, they are the Houston Astros. I mean, the past seven eight years, they are the team to beat. Um, so to get drafted by them is awesome. And, and I know how well and, and how good they do uh, with their pitchers. So just to just to be here, I'm, I'm really happy where I'm at. Um, that's really good to hear that Astros have a really good way of developing pitchers throughout the uh, the their lifetime. And so I'm, I'm hoping that uh, I know that you made up to Fayetteville this past year. And it's um, good to see that you've um, I know that you hit a few bumps uh, in your first um, first year with the uh, in professional baseball but you've made some adjustments and uh, that's what um, all you can ask for uh, as a, a young pitcher like yourself. So um, l coming from uh, Pennsylvania, I know there's a lot of great players that um, have come from Pennsylvania, but um, we also noticed that you've had uh, Tommy John early in your, in your life. Um, how have you uh, kind of developed as a pitcher following Tommy John surgery? Um, I'm, that's, that's a great question. Uh, I think first first off, Tommy John taught me a lot about myself and just how much I really did love baseball. And uh, although it's it's a tough thing to go through, I really think it was a blessing in disguise just to have that happen to me, show me where my priorities are. And then, like you said, from there, I mean, this is my third year post-TJ. I feel like I'm really getting my feet under me. I think last year I showed glimpses of what, what I can be. And uh, this year I feel comfortable um, throwing every day pretty much. So I think just the reps and the uh, the goals and the, and just taking the development serious is, is uh, really paid dividends. Yeah, you know, that's that's something that we've seen our not only our farmhands, but also um, our guys on the roster deal with. And they they always talk about going through that process. You learn you learn different things about yourself and really the guys that succeed are the guys that have the mentality that you have where you're like, okay, I'm moving forward. Um, you know, you know, you know, fretting about it or crying about it. it's not going to do me any good. It's just, how can I get better? Um, because you went from, you went from LaSalle and then you hit um, Townsend where you really saw a lot of your success. Um, so the mm -hmm. Houston Astros come in, they draft you in the sixth round. Um, from what I understand, uh, they really picked up um, on you and really liked what they saw when you were in the Northwoods League, which is which is a real popular league where you see a lot of developing players. If people do research on the Northwoods League, you would be surprised how many great players have come through there. What was that experience like at, at the Northwoods League? And um, do you anticipate maybe facing some of the guys that you faced down there one day in the big leagues? I mean, you never know. That'd be awesome. But the uh, the experience was great. I actually got to go there with two of my buddies from Towson, two other pitchers. So that was nice. Um, 
I really just think it, I kind of got – at that point, I had only thrown 40-something innings last year. I got there. Um, I was trending in the right direction, uh, just like how my body felt, how my arm felt, um, and everything kind of clicked. Uh, I always knew I had that in me, but I hadn't shown it yet. So when I got there, gotten that baseball every day kind of schedule, um, that really helped me. This episode is brought to you by Stitch Fix. Style so good, you can feel it. Go to stitchfix.com slash MLB. And it's that instant confidence boost you get when your outfit looks really good. That's what I get from Stitch Fix. Your style, your size, your budget all to fit you. Why? Because your professional stylist has you in mind. They give you things within your budget. They give you the styles you want. They give you the just for me pieces. And if there's anything you don't want, you can exchange it for free. You can always do that. So you're not stuck with something you'd want. It's like your stylist has style ESP. So style that makes you feel good and look good. Get started today with stitchfix.com slash MLB. For $20 off your first fix, that's stitchfix.com slash MLB for $20 off. Stitchfix.com slash MLB. Must redeem within seven days of sign up. All right. So you were drafted in 2023. You you played last year. Um, the ERA was not great. The success was not uh, there quite where you were used to being. I know you and I talked uh, before the show about uh, coming in t- after being drafted, you're known as a ground ball pitcher who would get some strikeouts. Um, has that kind of changed uh, after your first year in professional baseball? Uh, I'd like to think so. Um, like I said earlier when we were talking, I feel like I'm a completely different pitcher now. You know, when I got drafted last year, they basically told me, hey, your stuff's good, but we're going to make your stuff really good. And uh, I went from throwing two pitches last year to now I'm throwing five. Um, so it's just it's just been incredible to see that happen. Um, and I think part of the reason last year I kind of came in and I was working, you know, mechanics, uh, pitch shapes, all that. So I think this year I've really been able to separate, hey, this is what we work on throughout the week. And then when it's time to pitch, go pitch. And uh, I think that's the biggest thing. You know, and that's one of the things that I – recognize with this group and you know we talked to guys like jason bell other player development guys within the astros organization and you know they'll always say look it's not necessarily about the results like you can't always look at the scoreboard or the stat sheet but i do want to bring up some stats because um it shows up in the stat sheet um in 2023 so basically from 23 to 24 you've cut down on your run surrendered by half which is which is huge so in 23 you allowed 13 runs and 15 innings pitched this year only 11 runs and 31 and two-thirds innings pitched so you've allowed fewer runs and twice the amount of innings your case per nine have gone up um your walks per nine has been reduced and you're allowing almost 100 points less in batting average against what is the biggest adjustment you felt like you made from last year to this year? Um, like you said, you added, you know, you've got five pitches instead of two, but what are some other things you've done that has, you know, jettisoned that success on the mound? Um, I would say when I came in last year, my mechanics, although I felt they were good, when you really look down, like break it down, they were kind of all over the place. Um, and I think this off season, I really cleaned them up. And that's helped me a ton. Um, and at the same time, I, I think I'm just 10 times, like I think I'm just 10 times a better pitcher than I was last year when I came in. And I think that's just comes down to like being mature and, and realizing, hey, this is what I need to work on. And um, my process this year is, is so much better than my process last year, just throughout the week. And uh, I think that's, that's really taken me to the next level. And uh, I hope I can just keep it going. Um, I, I know this is something that uh, we we've had at the major league level recently, and we've had a pitcher who kind of went against the game plan a little bit. And uh, I wanted to know, like, how much at the minor league level? I mean, I'm sure you rely a lot on the catcher for the signals, the signs, and everything. Mm-hmm. How important is that relationship between the pitcher and the catcher for your success? 
and for building the confidence of the catcher at calling a good game. Oh, it, it's huge. Um, this is a guy you're going to, you're going to throw with every five days, every six days um, for six months. Uh, so that relationship needs to be, be tight. Um, it's, it's almost when you, when you and a catcher have something going, you can tell, you can feel it. Uh, you're always on the same page, um, whether it comes to pitch calling or, or location. So uh, just building that relationship in game and outside of game, it's just huge. So. so, so you have guys on this team like Kenny Gomez, other guys that really can um, torch a baseball. Um, what's it like? in the clubhouse in Fayetteville, do you guys have a good camaraderie? Um, do you guys, um, you know, just, just, just tell us about the atmosphere that they've built there in Fayetteville, because I've heard, I've heard nothing but, you know, good things. I remember when um, Joe Thon was there, he's now with double a Corpus and just several players. When they were there, we talked to Joey, we talked to, um, you know, you know, Quincy Hamilton, tell us about the Fayetteville clubhouse and just what kind of atmosphere they've built there. Uh, it, it's great. I mean, it, it really is a fun group of guys. Uh, everybody comes in every day, get, gets their work in. Um, no, that we don't really have many problems. It, it really is a fun group of guys that are, are there to get better and there to push one another. And uh, if I can help these guys get to the next level while I'm trying to get to the next level, that'd be awesome. And I feel like that's kind of the mentality everyone has in that locker room. All right. Uh, not today, Ethan. You're going to go out there. You're going to pitch uh, six uh, shutout innings. But let's say that you have a bad start or something like that. Is there any type of activity you you have to kind of relieve some stress? Like, is there anything that you do just to take your mind off of what happened? Or do you just say it's a game? It's one game and I move on. So what's your philosophy on getting over a bad start? Um. Yeah, it, it's tough. Every week you want to go out and, and perform, and, and sometimes that just doesn't happen. Uh, I think no matter what, whether I pitch well or I don't, I will be playing golf that, that uh, off day <laughs> Monday. I think that really just gets me away from baseball for the one day of the week. Um, and like you said, golf is a frustrating game. It, it kind of levels me no matter what's happening on the baseball field. So, uh, yeah, if I can play on a Monday, I'm going to play on a Monday. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Use the promo code Locked on MLB. You will get twenty dollars off your first purchase. When I tell you that there's no other ticket app that I go to, I'm telling you the truth. They have all in one pricing, views from your seats, lowest price guaranteed. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Pick the specific games or matchups you would love to attend. Talk about the good deals they. Have them. I mean, zone deals, flash deals, all in one pricing, no guessing, seat views, the lowest price guaranteed, game time ticket coverage. Purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry by downloading the game time app today. Create the account, use the promo code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create the account, redeem the code locked on MLB for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So have you had your um, family come out and watch you play at all since you've been in Fayetteville? And what is it like for them, you know, for your parents, for for your, you know, for your closest friends to sit there in the stands, watch you perform? Oh uh, yeah. So I've had some, some friends and family come out and watch and, I mean, it's just kind of surreal for them. Uh, for me, it's something I've always felt I was going to do and, and continue to do. But for them, it, it really hits home, especially my parents. I mean, they've been there my entire life, taking me all over the place for baseball. And, and for them, it just means the world to them to see me doing what I love. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just awesome for everybody. Um, I love that they can enjoy watching me um, since we don't get a ton of time together. And then I, I just love that I can make them happy and they're, they're happy with where I'm at and, and what I'm doing. All right. Uh, so a question I always like to ask is, uh, what are three things about Ethan Pecco that we cannot Google, we cannot find on the internet? What are three things about you that make mm. you, you? Oh, that is a good one. Let's see. Um, I, I hate to toot my own horn, but uh, I have gotten 
pretty pretty good at golf. I will say that. Uh, you might be able to find that on Google, but not quite. Uh, I think I'm funnier than most people would imagine. You know, I think when I'm on the baseball field, it, uh, I try to be very serious, just just get my work in, go about it that way. But in the clubhouse, I think I can uh, I can be pretty funny. Um, and then I don't know. I don't know a third one. I, I really don't. It's it's kind of just baseball, golf, and then uh, just I don't know. You kind of put me on the spot with this one. So um, if you're if this uh, hopefully your major league career takes off, but um, would you make it on Savannah Bananas? Are you that type of? Ooh. Would you have that type of um, f- uh, funniness? I guess. I don't see. I don't think I could do. Uh, all the media stuff. I don't. I don't think the uh, the dancing and all that's for me, honestly. No, yeah. I, I mean, think, uh, yeah. I mean, that's like a whole other level, you know. Both of us, yeah, uh, yeah. Both, um, Eric and I went, and, and you know, I think these guys were definitely cut out for what they're doing. Um, mm-hmm. And they were, you know, at one point, one of the guys I interviewed was actually a teammate of Greg Kessinger at Old Miss, and so that was so it was kind of neat. He had that Astros connection. But that that literally is I mean, that's why it's called banana ball and not baseball, because they have a whole different level. But, you know, it's great because they are getting people's eyes on baseball. Of course, they're doing things different. Um, Do the Fayetteville Woodpeckers do anything like because we know minor leagues are known for for the gimmicks and, you know, is there anything that Fayetteville's known for that we wouldn't know if we haven't been to a Woodpeckers game? Do they are there certain like promos they do or fan interactions that you've seen or maybe that w- ones you particularly liked? Um, I think like a lot of minor league teams, like you said, um, I think the games are extremely fun. Like if I'm not pitching, I'm and I'm hanging out in the dugout, I'm still having a good time. They you they usually have whether it's a, a jersey handout or a bobblehead handout, like they usually have something going on at the park every day. Um, so I think they just do an incredible job to, to get fans uh, that might not be too interested in baseball to get them to the ballpark. Um, so, yeah, I think just they, they do a great job. Um, I think Bunker is great for, for the kids, the uh, mascot. The kids seem to really take a liking to him. So, uh, yeah. Well, Ethan, we hope that you are uh, finding your way to Min Maid Park in the near future, and the Astros could definitely use some starting pitching. And so um, uh, you're making some great progress. Um, I know you're still young. You're 21 years old. So you've got a whole career ahead of you. So we wish you nothing but the best of luck and just continue doing what you're doing, and good luck in your start today. Uh, if you do uh, go out there and pitch seven innings, uh, we're here for you. Anytime you want to do the show before right. uh, you pitch, uh, we'll be here for you. So. Um, uh, Brett, any last questions? No, just I just want to thank you for you know for joining us. Um, you know, I just want to echo the sentiment, Eric. As we we definitely want to see you succeed in the ball field, and um, just hey, you know, uh, never never get outside of yourself. Um, just know that you can only control what you do and how you react to the things around you. And um, I promise you, you'll have a successful career no matter what. So good luck this year in Fayetteville. And we'll be watching for those moves as you uh, climb the Astros ladder. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Yes, guys, that's all we got for this edition of the Locked on Astros podcast. Make sure you go and subscribe to us. Make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify. Go and make sure you go and subscribe to us on YouTube and go ahead and make sure you follow Ethan's career as he advances through the Astros um, organization. And we will see you next time. And go Strohs.